Welcome again to another milling training video from DAPRA, your 100% American-made provider of high-performance inductible milling tools. Today's video is a short one, touching on the definitions and differences of climb milling versus conventional milling. We'll take a quick look at the characteristics of each, as well as some cases where you may want to choose one over the other. Let's start with conventional milling, which involves the entry of the cutting edge, shown here at the 9 o'clock position, at the already machined wall surface. As the cutter rotates through the material in the clockwise direction shown, the chip will get progressively thicker until reaching its maximum thickness as the cutter is exiting the material here at about the 12 o'clock position. Think of this as left side driving. The material being machined is on the left side of our cutter in the direction of travel, like driving in the UK on the left side of the road. The material is being fed against the rotation of our cutting tool, causing the machine tool to work harder against the tool rotation. In this approach, the cutting edge starts with rubbing, which we know from a previous video causes extra heat at the cutting edge. Since the chip is getting progressively thicker as the edge rotates through the material, progressively more work is being done with the increasing chip thickness, which means more heat is being created as well. This is actually the opposite of what we ideally want in our metal cutting operation. Climb milling starts with the cutting edge immediately engaging the material with a thick chip shown here at about the 11 o'clock position. This is what the cutting edge is designed to do, to take a good bite of the material being machined versus the rubbing entry we saw in the conventional cut approach. As the cutting edge rotates through the material here, the chip becomes progressively thinner, reducing the work being done and consequently reducing the heat being generated. The edge exits the material with the chip at its thinnest point providing a low temperature and low pressure exit from the cut. We can think of this as right side driving, like we do here in the US, with the material on the right side of the cutting tool in the direction of travel. In climb milling, the feed direction of the material works with the rotation of the cutting tool, helping the machine tool do its work. This generally provides a smoother sounding cut, as well as an improved surface finish. Tool life is also improved due to the cutting edge's ability to immediately create a chip, then progressively cool as it rotates through the material. Now that we've gained a better understanding of the definitions of climb and conventional milling, let's do a quick rundown of the differences between the two approaches. Climb milling is generally preferred, as it provides the best chip control and heat control. The cutting edge is usually entering either clean material or at least material that is less likely to be work hardened from previous cuts. Since climb milling works with the spindle rotation, it works with the machine tool to reduce the overall load. Climb milling will push the tool away slightly from the work material, reducing chances to undercut the apart. This approach will most often provide a superior surface finish as well. Now conversely, conventional milling causes initial rubbing entry for the cutting edge with the amount of heat being created actually increasing as the edge travels through the material due to the thickening of the chip. Now that rubbing may be happening against a pre-machined surface, which is more likely to be work hardened due to the conventional milling approach. Conventional milling also feeds the material against spindle rotation, increasing the overall workload on the machine tool. The cutting forces present tend to pull the cutting tool into the material being machined. So undercutting the part is a concern unless extra stock is being left for subsequent finishing cuts. This also tends to produce a slightly rougher finish on the machined surface. As with most things in life, there are exceptions to the rule. In some cases, a conventional cut can actually provide a benefit over climb milling. One of these cases is when abrasive scale is present on the workpiece, 
For example, after a flame cut operation. In this case, performing a climb cut causes our cutting edge to bite directly into the abrasive scale, potentially ending tool life prematurely. If a conventional cut is used, our cutter actually ends up pushing the scale away from underneath. So while we are shortening tool life to some extent due to the rubbing and increasing chip thickness of the conventional cut, it ends up being the lesser of two evils versus trying to cut directly into the scale. Now another case in which a conventional cut can be helpful is in long reach milling or where a long end mill is being used. Recall we said a climb cut tends to push a cutter away while a conventional cut tends to pull the cutting tool into the material. When milling with a long cutting tool, chatter can develop due to a bouncing effect from the tool pressure of climb milling. If a conventional approach is used instead, the tendency to pull the tool into the material can actually have a stabilizing effect on the cutting tool, smoothing out much of the chatter. This is most often noticed when a partial width of cut is being taken, perhaps less than 50% of the tool diameter. Try this next time your long reach cutter starts to squawk and no changes to speed or feed seem to help. You might be surprised. Well, that's it. We did say it was a short video this time. Use climb milling for most of your milling applications, but keep those few exceptions in mind just in case you run into trouble. Keep coming back for more milling training from DAPRA, and as always, please contact us for more information about DAPRA's exceptional American-made milling tools. See you soon.